The hammer has fallen, or the gavel in perhaps, at one and a quarter billion dollars. That's the price that Sony is reportedly paying for the right to Queen's entire back catalogue. There are a few exceptions, but let's not worry about those. It's thought to be the largest sum ever paid for a single artist's archive. It eclipses the 550 million Sony paid for Bruce Springsteen's catalogue. That was in 2021. And 200 million it paid for Bob Dylan's recordings. Jerry Maswad is the been covering the story for Variety. He joins me now from New York. How on earth do they get that money back? Even, even allowing for the popularity of those Queen anthems sung at every mitzvah, office party, and you name it. How do they make that money back? Well, you just answered your own question partially because those songs are going to be popular for decades. We Are the Champions, We Will Rock You are going to be played in stadiums for the rest of our lives, that's for sure. But there are also other options. There's still a lot of material in the archive that they can release or repackage. And most of all, included in the deal is name and likeness, which means that they get to create Broadway musicals and jukebox musicals and anything else they can think of to go with it. And you've got Freddie Mercury's life story. And as the biopic uh, Bohemian Rhapsody showed, there's a lot of interest in Queen's history. Right. So, so if that is the case, why would they not just keep it themselves, do all those things through a third party, pay them a fee, but keep the rights? What's the merit in capitalizing the, the, the asset? Well, there's a number of reasons. Number one, we're at absolute top of market still for a big catalog. For other catalogs, top of market was a couple of years ago. But for something like this, like Pink Floyd, a Beatles, a Rolling Stones catalog, something like that, really this is top of market. But also, you're dealing with estate issues here because Brian May, Roger Taylor, and John Deacon, the three surviving members of Queen, are all in their mid to late 70s. They're thinking about their inheritances. Do their kids want to deal with something as complex as music rights, which have to be pitched and packaged and really need to be done by professionals in order to maximize the value of them? And in a lot of cases, their, heir, their heirs just may be saying, you know, Dad, I don't want to deal with it. Just give me the money. Right. I can I, I can see that. And and then there are and it's more complex. And even than, than that. I was reading about it. You've got some that were hived off to Disney some years ago and you've got others that have been held by something else. And some people own a bit in their own. right. This is a minefield. Oh, absolutely. And the the uh, U.S. and uh, Canadian rights were a real sticking point because at some point and it's not clear when or for how much. Queen sold their recorded music rights for North America and Canada to Disney's Hollywood Records, okay? And uh, that would include CDs, box sets, vinyl, oh, yeah. downloads, if anybody still plays them. And, uh, you know, they sold it off. They probably regret it, but they got their billion anyway. Now, what's the next big one out there that's not been sold off, that's not in litigation, that's not, uh, you know, I mean, I, I always remember as a junior reporter being told, never use a piece of the Beatles. It's, in litig it's constantly in litigation. Uh, what's the next big one that's out there? Well, the Pink Floyd catalog has been floating around for several years. They've been trying to sell it for quite a while, but Roger Waters, who is the main songwriter, his arguably anti-Semitic comments and anti-US, anti-Ukraine, pro-Putin statements, they actually have tank the value of it quite a bit and people just don't want to deal with it because he's basically harming the asset that would have been one um other ones it's it's tough to say because a lot of the time these things will be being bid for and you don't know it because nobody's right. under any obligation to tell journalists uh, but you got it anyway and i'm grateful to you sir for coming on tonight and talking about it thank you have a lovely weekend